So in the Jackson section 1.2, there's a brief discussion on direct order function. So let's um, look at it uh, a little bit. So strictly speaking, a delta function is not a well-defined function. It only defined actually is uh, within an integral. You put it inside an integral, then it uh, can define it like that. But another way to look at it is, uh, is you can consider it as a limit of a more well-behaved function. And that limit can be like a very simple one, like if you have a function, uh, let's choose the pen here. You have function x. This f x is like simply as a rectangle, like a, it's only non-zero. It's over this range of, of about zero. It's, this range is a, and then this height is one of a. Then this function f x as a goes to infinity. Like a goes to zero with a height goes to infinity. So the area obviously is one. This function, this limit can be regarded as uh, the other function. So that uh, a simple one. But uh, this function is um, discontinuous. It's actually uh, it's the way the, the derivative is discontinuous. You have a sharp derivative here and there. So it's not a smooth function. So. Uh, uh, you can define a limit using uh, more well-defined function like a, a Gaussian. Say, for example, if you take a Gaussian uh, minus k square x square, and again you require the integral integrating over the whole range of x is one, so you normalize that. From, so divide by square of pi multiplied by k, and take the limit of k goes to infinity, then again, this would uh, tends to a delta function. Okay, so uh, there's another way to do it. And there's yet another way, there's many more ways, but another way to do it is, uh, another common way to do it is integrating, say, a, um, sinusoidal function or exponential input uh, i k x and integrate over k over a range a say a large ring minus capital k to capital k and again uh, you to normalize it one over two pi and take the limit of capital k goes to infinity okay that again will tends to a delta function. Okay, and there are the for, uh, another form to look at this one because this in the integral can be evaluated quite easily because this e to the i k x is just cosine k x plus i sine k x. The sine term after the integration will be zero because the sine is an odd function. Only the cosine term will survive. So this is goes to so one over pi integrate zero to k cosine of little k x dk. And this integral is, uh, so that will give you a sine k x divided by pi over x. So this function take a limit of k actually after you evaluate, this is capital K, not a small K. So capital K goes to infinity. Then uh, this one is also a, a representation of the uh, delta function. Okay, so uh, you can look at uh, some properties of delta function. So Jackson listed uh, a few of these delta function. And the first property of uh, quite obviously from this discussion is that the delta function is an even function. So delta minus x is delta x. So quite obvious, by these three examples, so this one is 
an even function, the Gaussian is an even function, and even this one, where alpha is this sine and divided by x, sine kx divided by x is a, an even function. So uh, generally, it's, uh, you can, when you look at it in the de definition of the integral, in the integral, then uh, it's obviously this is a, a, uh, an even function. Okay, and then uh, another property listed in Jackson, the first point is uh, the other x is uh, zero. If uh, for, uh, actually Jackson say x minus x, I'll, I'll just say x, uh, x not equals to zero. And then uh, another way to look at it will be infinity for x equals zero, although this is uh, a little not well defined, but uh, you can see, see that from this, this example quite obviously when a goes to zero, the height goes to infinity. So that's uh, one way to look at uh, the, uh, the values of delta function, but uh, again, uh, delta function only defined within the integral. So the next, uh, ex, next property is that uh, when you integrate the delta function, now delta function x minus a dx, it will be one, uh, if uh, x is within the, the range of integration, uh, let's uh, uh, say like uh, define it like if this is uh, what, if, what if I recall it, Jackson didn't say that uh, like if it is um, within x mean x max m a x. If uh, x is within x means and x max, so mean x max. Okay, and this is otherwise. Okay, so uh, of course there's a tricky situation if uh, one of these x mean and x max is exactly a, then um, there's a uh, complication of that, but uh, if you forget about that, uh, that that would be uh, true. This is zero, this is one. This is the two situation. Okay, and uh, this is quite obvious by this, all this definition. If you integrate this function over this delta function, it will be uh, one because of this area is one. If you otherwise if you integrate the part that uh, the delta function is zero, or the other way around defined by this limit, if obviously is zero. Okay, so that's the uh, and second property. The third property is, uh, again, uh, if you integrate a fx times delta x minus a dx, it will be equals to f a or zero. So again, uh, over this two uh, situation, x min and x max. Okay. And um, of course, uh, you have to have uh, assume that fx is well defined. So, or it doesn't change that much uh, over this uh, range at that you define the limit of the delta function. It doesn't, it's a more, more, uh, slowly moving function, so you can define the fa here. Okay, and so that's uh, a uh, property of delta function. So put it in the integram, you get the value of f, that the f function evaluate x equals to a. Okay, so that's the third one. The fourth one uh, is, uh, now you can talk about the, uh, uh, fx times, is still fx times the derivative of uh, a delta function. Okay, and dx. And to see that, uh, again, this is 
x min x max okay and you can do it by um, like uh, integration by parts so that means that you have fx delta function of x and x mean and actually x minus a let's see let's minus a x minus a evaluate x mean x max and then minus integrate f x pi delta x minus a dx okay so again this the, the two limits is uh if the first case if the x is within it and not exactly equals to it so the integral would not be zero or the, the the inside the argument of the delta function is not zero so by property one this would be zero so that would be zero and by the second this is uh, the third property. This one is the, using the third property. So this will be equals to minus of f pi evaluate x equals to a. Okay, so that uh, the fourth property. And the fifth one is uh, consider the uh, uh, F uh, now integrate um, a function. Say now it's the F, you call it a G function, delta G of X, delta function. But then the argument is uh, actually also a function X. Okay. Uh, DX. All right. Now, uh, this one, you need to do uh, something like uh, a change of variable. So, so what we, uh, because now the argument is F instead of A, A. but then another way, another way to look at that uh, is uh, assuming F X is zero at uh, x equals to uh, x sub i. So, okay, so, uh, and you you can have more than one i, so i equals to one, two, three, four, oh, and so around f, around x equals to x sub i, so f x will be approximate f x sub i plus f pi x sub i x minus x sub i plus oh, all that okay but f x sub i is zero so this is zero so this is uh, approximately i should say sum because uh, there can be more than one it will be sum of i g x delta f pi x i times x minus x of i g x. Okay. Now the by the first discussion the the data function is actually as uh, a even function. So the sign of the derivative is actually unimportant and we can change that to absolute value. Okay. Whether it's positive or negative doesn't matter. So now uh, 
we can say multiply by uh, because this this is something times uh, x not exactly x so we can change like do a change of variable so gx divided by f pi at xx xi absolute value and then delta uh, and x i x minus x i then f pi x sub i times dx now after i do the change of variable this is considered one variable and now this multiplied by another variable so uh, now we can the uh, just use the usual property of the other function like this uh, property three and if uh, the integration range is over uh, containing this x sub i this will be equals to x sub i g at uh, x sub i divided by this f prime of x sub i so overall the x within the this integration limit uh, I actually get rid of the integration limit This window is just overblocking me. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So this means that uh, you can uh, change the this imply the delta function of f x can be we got a sum over i delta function of x minus x sub i divided by f prime x sub i absolute values okay so this is a uh, property number five and uh, i think uh, the other property let's let me look at that uh, the, the sixth property is uh, is a higher dimension delta function. So what uh, we talk about already in class. So let me find a space to look at that. This is one dimension, uh, one dimensional delta function. If a high dimensional delta function like uh, says uh, with a vector inside, okay this delta function will be, if it's three dimension will be delta x, delta y, delta z for a Cartesian coordinate. Okay, so that's uh, just a definition of what we mean by delta function with a vector argument. And then the one, when you have a vector argument, the number seven is uh, you integrate it for a three dimensional delta function. So this one will be one if uh, over volume V, if uh, zero is within this volume, zero if uh, zero is not within this volume. Okay, so that's uh, the other two properties. So uh, I think uh, that's uh, all the discussion in, on Jackson, of course there are the there are many more discussion on direct delta function, but uh, uh, we'll stop here for the uh, discussion related to this section. Okay, so let's stop. The... Recording.